Hey guys, Garrett here, and today is part one of my step-by-step -step series on how to do your own geothermal system. Now, most of you probably saw this video right here, which gives a pretty good background as to what geothermal does, the benefits behind it, and why I did it. But you may have been left with some questions of how do I actually do this? So I'm gonna go step-by-step -step on how to do this. And there's parts of this that I think everyone should hire out. Number one would be the electrical side of it. Unless you're an electrician or very proficient in electrical work, hire that out. Number two, the heat loss calculation of your home. I'm not saying you can't do that, but it's very, very technical. You're gonna have to buy a manual J, you're gonna have to figure out how to actually use it, and hopefully you'll have the correct heat loss calculations for your house. But regardless, I would have someone probably do that for me if I was you. And I would have someone actually set the unit in place, the, the geothermal unit, have them set it in place and hook it to your duct work. Or if you're doing a radiant floor type system, go ahead and have them hook to that as well. There are certain things, at least in my opinion, that aren't as DIY and that's one of them. The big thing that is DIY with the geothermal, the ground source heat pump, that is the loops that are going to be outside. And everything that I'm going to talk about is specific to horizontal closed loop system. Most of the vertical type systems, whether it's open loop or closed loop, aren't very DIY and they sure as heck aren't cheap. They're gonna require well drillers and uh, if, you know, if it's a closed loop system, they're gonna drop a really long line down into that well. And then they're gonna grout that well closed. That's not something you can do. You can't do it legally. So this series is designed for what you can do. But the closed looped horizontal system, that is the most DIY friendly system out there. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. Part one here is going to be about soils. And it may sound kind of boring to get into soils, but it is one of the most important things associated with your geothermal system. The soils can make or break that system. You could spend a lot of money on this, put it in the wrong soils and it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna get the efficiencies that you want. So pay attention, this is important. In order to size the loops that you're going to need, so you're going to have so many feet of pipe per ton of unit size that you have. So if you have a three ton system, you're gonna have probably three different loops that are going back and forth out in your yard. And those loops are gonna be a specific length. In my case, they were 600 feet long. Some places could be 500, some eight, some thousand feet. It's dependent upon your soils, so know those soils. When we start talking about soils, one of the big things associated with the geothermal is its thermal conductivity, the soil's thermal conductivity. You want to know what type of soil you have so that you know what the thermal conductivity of that soil is going to be. So you're gonna to need to know what the classification of the soil is, the density of the soil, as well as the moisture moisture content of that soil. Well, if you look at this thermal conductivity chart, and let me define thermal conductivity. That is how much heat will flow in that particular material. So it depends what type of soil and how much heat will flow into that soil. So as you look in this chart, you're gonna see gravel, sand, clay, till, and peat. Those are different classifications of soil. And of course, as you look to the right of that, you're going to see different thermal conductivity values. Well, the big thing you need to know here is the higher the number, the better off you're going to be. Dry gravel versus water saturated gravel. You can tell there's a big difference in those values. And I'm typically going to look at the middle column, which is the typical column. That's typically what you're going to find with these. So dry gravel versus water saturated gravel, 0.4 versus 1.8. Big difference there. With that said, I would never put my loops in gravel. Hopefully you don't have very high gravel within your soil. If you do, if you have rocky soil, you're probably gonna wanna bring in some nice clean soil, probably put six inches of it down, put your pipes in, and then another six inches on top of it before you backfill back in. But 
you want relatively clean soil. So you may have sandy soil and you can look at this. This has dry, moist, or water saturated. So let's define dry. Dry is the absolute absence of water. It's dusty and it's just dry to the touch. You're, you're gonna know it's dry. If it's moist, it is damp, but there is no visible water. It's dark in color, it's cool to the touch, and it's moldable. If you put it in your hands, you can mold it into shapes. If it is wet or saturated, you're gonna see visible water droplets. And it's usually going to be below the water table. Of course, it's gonna be dark in color, but the big telltale is you're going to see water droplets. Looking further at this table, you look at the clay slash silt. The dry values, 0.5 versus the water saturated, 1.8. Again, big, big difference here. You want soils that are moist. And therefore, you probably want a thermal conductivity of, I'm gonna say 1.5 or above. That's gonna give you some really good results. How do you test for thermal conductivity? Well, you're probably not going to. You're gonna to have to have that geotechnical engineering firm do it for you. Is it totally required? I would say no. As long as you can identify what the material is that you're putting these pipes in, what kind of soil it is, and what the density is, because the higher the density of that soil, the better the thermal conductivity is, as well as the higher the moisture content, the better the thermal conductivity. The first thing I would tell you to do is to dig a test hole and take soil samples at different levels. I would start first soil sample at five feet and then six feet, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet. Just go down, collect those samples. Then your best bet is to take it to a geotechnical engineering firm and have them analyzed. That is going to give you the absolute most information possible about that soil sample. If you don't have a geotechnical engineer readily available or you're too cheap to do their services, well, there are other ways that you can do this. Number one, you can figure out what your moisture content is. So dig down, grab your sample, weigh it, and then dry it out completely. And you're gonna do this in your oven for usually 24 hours at 105 degrees C. Dry that sample completely out and that's gonna give you a dry weight. So you want your before weight, your dry weight. You subtract the two of those and then divide it by that before weight, the wet weight, and that's gonna give you your moisture content. You take that number times 100 and that gives it to you in percentage. So if you have a 100 gram sample and you put it in the oven, and you dry it out completely, it comes back out at 85 grams. The difference between those two is 15 grams. So 15 divided by 100 gives you 0.15. Take that times 100, and that's 15%. That means it has a moisture content of 15%. And honestly, that would be a really good soil to put it in. To identify the actual type of soil, there are several things that you can do. If your area, you have farmers around, go talk to a farmer and see what kind of soils they run up against, especially at different depths. Talk to a contractor that is say a pipe layer. They are gonna dig all the time. So they're going to know the different layers of soil in your area. Hopefully they know something that's relatively close to where it is that you're putting this system in. I'm gonna say within a quarter to a half a mile. Talk to your local city or county engineer. They're going to know a lot about the soils in your area as well. So they're probably gonna tell you what is typical at different depths. So between knowing what type of soil, especially if you take a sample soil to them, they're gonna be able to look at it and give you a really close representation of the type of soil that that is. And then if you figured out what the moisture content of it was, like I already described, you're gonna know most of what you need. So if you know this, information and it's relatively clean soil, it's free from rocks, you're going to be able to take this information to your supplier or to your heat pump manufacturer and tell them, this is what I have. How many feet of pipe do I need? And that's all you need. Once you know that information, you can take that to them and you're gonna get the correct sized pipe. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about trenches, the different ways to lay the pipe in the trenches, as well as the different depths, the different temperatures at those depths. So make sure to come on back, hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe. 
I'll see you guys next time.